Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this. Now this is a British Army 1964 pattern wool flannel shirt. There's nothing particularly unique about this. It's a standard issue bit of kit from the mid 1960s. Of course it replaced the preceding design which had been introduced in the early 1950s and would be replaced itself by the KF shirt, the infamous KF shirt which was used through the 1970s and 1980s. It's a nicer shirt than that which replaced it. It's made of uh, wool flannel rather than the wool mix that was used later on. It's a lot more comfortable to wear and it has certain other features, obviously the pleated pockets and so forth, which would be removed from the, the simplified design of the KF. But it's otherwise relatively similar. Looking at the front here, we have two breast pockets, as you can see, with pleats. The left breast pocket also includes, if we open this up here, a pen pocket. You can just see that in there, inside the shirt there. So interesting little feature of the design there. We'll see the stitching for that when we turn this inside out as well. The collar is in, in contrast to the 1950s shirt, which this replaced. It doesn't have bones down the front. It's actually almost a permanent press uh, effect on this. It's semi-stiffened. So when ironed, it presses nice and flat and it can be worn with a tie. This can be buttoned up and worn with a tie, much as it is intended for use with the combat uniform. It can also be worn with a tie. You have a button opening all the way down the front here, as you can see, uses the same type of buttons as would be seen on the later KF, these small dish buttons. We'll get a close up of one of these now. You can see that in detail here. Also gives you a close up of the wool flannel cloth that this is made from as well. That's basically the front of the shirt. It is a relatively practical design for the time, obviously with some concessions to smartness in terms of the collar and so forth as well. We'll start moving this round now and have a look at some of the other details. Looking at the right hand side of the shirt here, you can see the epaulette up on the shoulder there, a better view of the shape of the collar there coming down to this point at the front here. And this, as you can hopefully see there, is semi-stiffened. So it can, it does give that element of smartness to the, to the shirt. Looking at the arm here, one of the reasons I was very happy to pick this up is it includes rank. So this has sergeant's rank sewn on there. This is in a white herringbone tape on a green backing, as you can see in the close up here. So quite pleased to, to have this. I say it's not that common to find these with rank attached. So nice to have that with the sergeant's rank up on the arm there. Looking further down the sleeve at the cuff, you can see there's no gusset here. It closes with a single button around the cuff band there. The lack of a gusset means these can be very easily rolled up and they remain smart when rolled up. So the shirt is designed with that in mind. You can easily roll the sleeves up if required when wearing this in shirt sleeve order. Looking at the back of the shirt, you can see here the tails are much longer than the front of the shirt, which is fairly typical for shirts of this type of this time period. So you have that at the rear there, that detail at the rear. You do have a yoke over the shoulders here where the epaulettes attach. You can see that running across the back here. Otherwise, very plain at the back, not a lot more to see there. And looking at the left hand side, other than the lack of rank, it's basically a mirror image of the other side, the right hand side, which we've already looked at. So that's it for the externals of the shirt. We'll turn this inside out now and have a look at some of the details of the construction and the label. Looking at the inside of this, we'll look at the front first and you can see the stitching for the two breast pockets here and details of the construction. You can see the stitching here for that internal pen pocket inside what would be the left breast pocket if this was worn the right way out. You can see that there. And just hold the collar up here so you can again see the details of the construction around there. Looking at the sleeve here, you can see the details of the in internals the construction of the cuff there, the strengthening piece at the top of the cuff, top of the cuff opening there, and obviously the details of all the seams and everything around there. And then looking at the back of this, you can again see the yoke coming over the shoulders here, otherwise very plain down the back. We do have the label there, and you can see where the, the cloth, formerly the yoke over the shoulders there, joins in the middle, the seam in the middle there, and the label here, which shows the manufacturer Ladybird and Belfast, and the date of 1966. It's a particularly nice clear label this and obviously you have the size at the top there, size 15. So there we are, nothing particularly unique to talk about here but nevertheless I hope it's been of interest. Shirts are sometimes a little bit of a neglected topic, it's less common to see photographs of soldiers in shirt sleeve order than it is obviously wearing the full combat uniform so the shirt is often hidden away but as I say this is the 1964 pattern so that most probably most closely associated with the 1960 pattern combat uniform in that mid 1960s era. As I say I do hope this has been of interest if it has and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed please do make sure you hit the little bell the notification button down below that will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated, as I always say. Thank you all very much indeed. 
If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are all linked down below. And as ever, if you'd like to get in touch, but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there in the description as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.